Welcome to the second episode of Cardiorespiratory System. In this episode, we will be talking about training adaptions, effects of exercise and to critically explain the physiological effects of exercise on human respiratory system and cardiovascular system. To begin with, I will explain the two systems, their specific functions and how they interrelate. I will then go on to analyze the effects of exercises on the two systems by looking at the way in which the body deals with an increased workload and any health issues that may affect this. Training adaptations in the cardiorespiratory system Aerobic training typically produces an increase in functional capacities related to the oxygen transport and use in the body. Aerobic endurance training produces significant increases in the maximal oxygen consumption. Maximal oxygen consumption is an indicator of the level of cardiovascular, pulmonary and neuromuscular function. Cardiovascular adaptations to aerobic training include cardiac hypertrophy. This is characterized by an increase in the size of the left ventricular cavity and a modest increase in the wall thickness. An increase in the total blood volume may contribute to the cardiac hypertrophy Regular training results in the increased cardiac output during subsequent exercise resulting in the improved delivery of oxygen to the active muscles. Increased end diastolic volume as well as an increase in myocardial contractility result in an increase in stroke volume during rest and exercise. At the same time, the resting and submaximal exercise heart rate actually decreases. The increase in the cardiac output is a direct result of improved stroke volume. Systolic and diastolic blood pressure during rest and submaximal exercise decreases with regular aerobic training. Much of the improvement in the pulmonary function in response to aerobic training is attributable to strengthened respiratory musculature. The respiratory musculature becomes more efficient reducing the oxygen cost attributable to breathing. Strengthened respiratory muscles improve respiratory efficiency and minimizes respiratory work at a given exercise intensity. Trained athletes can maintain alveolar ventilation by increased tidal volume with only a small increase in the breathing rate. Trained athletes can also sustain a higher breathing rate if necessary. Effects of exercise. Exercise affects the circulatory system respiratory system and the muscles. Short term effects occur immediately as we begin to exercise. Long term effects are more concerned with the adaptive changes over time with regular exercise. Short term effects of exercise. When we begin to exercise, the body has to respond to the change in the activity level in order to maintain a constant internal environment. Here are the changes which must take place within the muscles, respiratory and circulatory system. Circulatory system. The release of adrenaline often before exercise even begins causes the heart rate to rise. This increases cardiac output venous return increases due to higher cardiac output and skeletal muscle pump and respiratory pump. Increases in lactic acid. 
produced during the early phase of exercise. Carbon dioxide, due to increased rate of energy and production and temperature all act as stimuli to the cardiac control center which responds by further increasing the heart rate. Oxygen levels within the blood decrease which causes increased diffusion at the lungs. Blood pressure increases, thus increasing flow rate and the speed of delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the working muscles. Vasodilation and vasoconstriction ensure blood is directed to the areas that need it and away from inactive organs. Respiratory system Changes in the concentration of CO2 and O2 in the blood are detected by the respiratory system which increases the rate of breathing. The intercostal muscles Diaphragm and other muscles which aid the expansion of the thoracic cavity work harder further, increase the expansion during inhalation to draw in more air. Muscles The higher rate of muscle contraction depletes energy stores and so stimulates a higher rate of energy metabolism. The body's energy stores are slowly depleted. Myoglobin releases its stored oxygen to use in aerobic respiration. Oxygen can now be diffused into the muscles from the capillaries more quickly due to the decreased O2 concentration in the muscles. Long term effects of exercises Regular exercise results in the adaptation to the circulatory, respiratory and muscular systems in order to help them perform better under additional stress. Here are the changes which must take place within the muscles, respiratory system and circulatory system. Circulatory system The cardiac muscle surrounding the heart hypertrophies resulting in thicker stronger walls and therefore increase in heart volumes. The more blood pumped around the body per minute, the faster oxygen is delivered to the working muscles. The number of red blood cells increases, improving the body's ability to transport oxygen to the muscles for aerobic energy production. The density of capillary beds in the muscles and surrounding the heart and lungs increases as more branches develop. This allows more efficient gaseous exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The resting heart rate decreases in trained individuals due to the more efficient circulatory system. The accumulation of lactic acid is much lower during high levels activity. Due to the circulatory system providing more oxygen and removing waste products faster. Arterial walls become more elastic which allow greater tolerance of changes in blood pressure. Respiratory system and exercise. The respiratory muscles increase in strength. This results in larger respiratory volumes which allow more oxygen to be diffused into blood flow. An increase in the number and diameter of capillaries surrounding the alveoli leads to an increase in the efficiency of gaseous exchange. Muscles Increased number of mitochondria means an increase in the rate of energy production. The muscles, bones and ligaments become stronger to cope with the additional stresses and impact put through them. The amount of myoglobin within the skeletal muscle increases 
which allows more oxygen to be stored within the muscles and transported to the mitochondria. Muscles are capable of storing a larger amount of glycogen for energy. Enzymes involved in energy production become more concentrated and efficient to aid the speed of metabolism. The effects of exercises on respiratory and cardiovascular system. The objective of this report is to critically explain the physiological effects of exercise on the human respiratory system and cardiovascular system. To begin with, I will explain the two systems, their specific functions and how they interrelate. I will then go on to analyze the effects of exercise on the two systems by looking at the way in which the body deals with an increased workload and any health issues that may affect this. Cardiovascular system. This system is responsible for pumping blood and oxygen around the body. It is a network made up of blood vessels that transport carbon dioxide from the body to the lungs. The heart is an organ so needs a constant supply of oxygen. This is supplied by a separate network of blood vessels called the coronary system made up of coronary veins and arteries. The heart is the size of a clenched fist located slightly to the left of the chest. It is divided into left and right side, has four chambers and works as a pump. Veins deliver deoxygenated blood from the body to the right side of the heart which is known as the pulmonary circulation. The heart then pumps back to the lungs to absorb oxygen. Oxygenated blood returns to the left side of the heart which pumps it into the rest of the body through the arteries. This is known as systematic circulation. The respiratory system, this system is responsible for ensuring the body has a constant supply of oxygen whilst removing carbon dioxide. It is made up of six organs and there are three major parts of the system. The airway, the lungs and the muscles of respiration. The respiratory system supplies the oxygen needed for the cardiac workload and its main function is gaseous exchange. Breathing volume. Control of breathing by medulla. Unlike the cardiovascular system which has myogenic cardiac muscles in the heart, the respiratory system is controlled by nerve signals from the brain. Start. Impulsive from respiratory center cause constrictions of intercostal and diaphragm muscles which cause inspiration to start. Lungs inflate and air moves in. Inspiration. Inflammation of lungs stimulates stretch receptors in walls of the bronchioles which fire off nerve impulses to the respiratory center. At the end of expiration, the inhibitions of the respiratory center is removed. Stretch receptors are no longer stimulated, so no more nerve impulses are fired off. Impulses from the stretch receptors begin to inhibit the respiratory center. Inhibition of the respiratory center prevents impulses causing inspiration. No impulses cause the muscle to relax, so expirations occur passively. Lungs deflate and air moves out. Expiration. As the lungs become more inflated, more impulses are sent to the respiratory center and it is completely inhibited. Gas exchange. Gas exchange happens in the alveoli and is the process of supplying the blood with oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. A waste 
product of cell respiration. Without gas exchange, oxygen would not get into the blood and there would be a build up of carbon dioxide in the body. If these two things happened, the body would not be able to function to stay alive. Gas exchange can happen because the concentration gradient across the alveoli wall is maintained by the blood flow on one side and the air flow on the other. Tissues found in the two systems, tissue type, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, connective tissues. Blood is a loose connective tissue transporting substances around the body. Outer layer of blood vessels are made up of loose connective tissues meaning they are soft, pliable, enabling diffusion. Different cell arrangements are suspended in an extracellular matrix forming the characteristic of tissues. The matrix is what makes the tissue strong and protects the cells. It is made up of protein and carbohydrates. The tracia and bronchi are both supported by C-shaped rings of cartilage to keep them open. The ring is not complete which means they can still move. The epiglottis is made out of the cartilage. Connective tissue is found wherever there is epithelial tissue as it makes up the base membrane of the epithelial tissue. The epithelial tissue, the inner layer of blood vessels are made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue enabling blood to flow without friction and allowing diffusion. Endocardial layer of heart is lined with simple endothelial tissue allowing blood to flow without friction preventing damage to cells. The walls of alveoli are made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue to allow quick diffusion. Pseudostratified ciliated epithelium line the upper respiratory tract to trap and move pollutants upward with goblet cells producing mucus to trap debris. Ciliated cells sweep the mucus up out of the airways. Without this type of special lining tissues, the lungs would get polluted with dirt from the air that is breathed in. Muscle tissue. The heart is made up of involuntary cardiac muscles meaning it contracts under the control of nervous system only. Myocardium layer is the heart wall of cardiac muscles made up of myogenic cells enabling the heart to contract without the nerve signals. This means the heart can carry on beating if a person is classed as brain dead. Muscle tissues are made up of specialized cell using energy to contract and create a pulling force. Smooth muscle is found in the bronchioles to control air flow into different portions of the lungs. Due to the absence of supporting cartilage, the size of the bronchioles, they are exposed to the possibility of collapsing and becoming blocked. Skeletal muscle and fibrous tissue is found in the diaphragm enabling it to contract and relax. Nervous tissue. Sinoatrian mode is made up of nervous tissues enabling it to send electrical currents to make the heart contract. Nerve sensors in the muscles of the respiratory system receive impulses from the brain to control breathing. The brain detects oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the body. So without this type of tissue, the respiratory system 
would not know when it needed to speed up or slow down. Cellular respiration Cellular respiration is a process in which the energy in glucose is turned into adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy cells need for the body to function. The cardiovascular and respiratory system both work together to aid this process by supplying the oxygen and glucose and by removing carbon dioxide. Cellular respiration occurs in one of two ways, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration occurs when there is a sufficient amount of oxygen in the cells. Glucose is broken down by oxygen, turning it into energy. Carbon dioxide and water are produced as waste products of this process. Glucose molecules carry a lot of energy as there are so many bonds and the energy that is released is stored as ATP. The equation for aerobic respiration is Anaerobic respiration occurs when aerobic respiration is unable to produce the amount of ATP energy needed because of lack of oxygen usually during strenuous exercise. Anaerobic respiration happens without oxygen which means the glucose is only partially broken down making it inefficient. It also produces lactic acid which builds up and the muscles cramp causing the person to stop exercising. Oxygen is needed to break the lactic acid down and this is referred to as oxygen debt. After anaerobic respiration, a person will breathe heavily for a period of time to make up the oxygen and to return to aerobic respiration. The equation for anaerobic respiration is Without cellular respiration, the body would not receive the energy needed in order to function when at rest and when under pressure. The effects of exercise on two systems. When the person exercises, the body's demand for oxygen and energy increases. This means that both systems will be under stress and have to work harder in order to meet the demands. The muscles in the heart and diaphragm will have to work quicker, meaning they have less resting time. However, as regular exercise would strengthen these muscles, this would result in larger breathing volumes, which in turn would allow more oxygen to be diffused into the blood flow. The heart muscles and walls would also get bigger and stronger meaning it can push more blood out per beat so blood pressure would be lowered even when at rest. It also improves the elasticity of the blood vessels, meaning oxygen and glucose can be delivered at a faster rate to the muscles, making the heart more efficient. However, these muscles might not be strong enough to cope with the increased stress and should be built up over time. Exercise tolerance tests can determine an individual's safe level of exercise. As the body demands more oxygen, the heart rate and the pulmonary ventilation increase to supply the muscles with oxygen. Exercise temporarily increases the capillary density at the muscle site which makes gas exchange quicker and more efficient. However, anaerobic respiration leads to oxygen death and a built-up of lactic acid resulting in the muscle cramp. It also limits the amount of energy the body receives as the amount of ATP produced 
during anaerobic respiration is much lower than during aerobic respiration. There are certain respiratory conditions that may limit an individual's ability to exercise even if the cardiovascular system would benefit from more vigorous exercise. Conditions such as asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD limit the amount of oxygen intake. Both of these conditions narrow the airways meaning the body cannot get the oxygen it needs. This in turn would cause the heart to pump harder to try and supply its need which would eventually fatigue the muscles. A positive effect of exercise is that it can increase the good cholesterol in the blood which helps to lower the bad cholesterol. Over time, high cholesterol can cause blocked arteries which means that parts of the heart would be oxygen deprived. By lowering cholesterol, you reduce the risk of blood clots and heart attacks as the blood can flow freely without obstruction. One of the causes of diabetes type 2 is obesity. It damages the blood vessels by narrowing and blocking them which can cause strokes due to oxygen starvation in the brain. Exercise aids weight loss which in turn will reduce the risk of diabetes type 2. Conclusion In conclusion, it can be said that exercise is beneficial for both the cardiovascular and respiratory system as it helps to strengthen the heart and increases respiratory capacity. Even when underlying conditions are present, a safe level of exercise is recommended as it can help conditions from worsening. However, as the cardiovascular and respiratory system work together supplying the body with oxygen and energy and by removing carbon dioxide, if one system is unable to function properly under the stress of exercise, the other system will also suffer. I hope to see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.